Hey guys, let's go over module seven. Um, we're going to identify nutrients as they relate to food groups, um, possible solutions for undernutrition, and then procedures that can be um, used to limit the risk of foodborne illnesses. In this video here, um, you're going to see all of the information I have for you about um, the assignments for this module. So we're going to look at chapter 13. And we're really going to do the bulk of our learning from chapter 13. This is going to be over global nutrition. Um, a lot of what we're going to see in your module or in your um, exam for this module is going to be E. coli, salmonella, and the non-virus epidemics. Um, so here's some terminology you're going to want to know. One in nine people worldwide are chronically undernourished. We see this a lot more in third world developing countries, um, as you can see from this global map. Um, most of uh, this can come from food insecurity. Here are some um, commonly accompanied under nutritional like deficit, uh, deficiencies. Um, you'll see that with a lot of vitamins and minerals because we're not getting the nutrients we need from food um, because it could be caused from famine um, in larger uh, countries. Here are some countries that are at crisis. Uh, this can be caused by a lot of things, uh, some of the effects of hunger, infant birth weights, immunity, um, strength and energy concentration, mental health, productivity. So um, some general effects of semi-starvation would be physical symptoms, not yet visible, ability to work, learn, reproduce, and recover from illnesses and injuries are affected. Um, you typically just don't get better faster. Um, it takes a lot longer. So some strategies to address this would be um, ready to use foods, already pre-made foods, um, a lot of this in children, um, micronutrient suppl supplementation, so your vitamins and minerals, um, it can still increase their height and weight, even though they're not getting all of that they need from real food. Um, this is also a big deal in the United States. So 38 million people live at or below the poverty line, and most of those, um, their budget does not include groceries. So um, we do have a lot of different ways we can help others within um, the U.S. We've got SNAP, we have food stamps, um, we have school breakfasts and lunches, there are after school programs for students, um, there is Meals on Wheels for our elderly as well as WIC. Here are some other programs for students and children. Um, you're going to need to know some of these and what, uh, you need to know all of them, what uh, compares to them, the eligibility and the description, just a brief description of that. So um, this uh, messes with sociological factors. So poverty is characterized as a situation or a generalization. Um, poverty is looked down at, and sometimes it's just not something that you can prepare for or you can um, not necessarily neglect, but just um, kind of see in your future. So um, there's diff there's two differences. There's a generalizational poverty, a culture of persistent poverty passed from parent to child. There's situational. So um, this can just be something that is temporary. This can be something that just happens all of a sudden. Um, you'll need to know the seven Ds, divorce, death, disease, downsize, disabled, disaster, and debt. Those typically go with situational poverty. Um, homelessness can also be within that category. Just that these are the different causes. You'll need to know some of those. Um, typically, whenever you are on one of these government plans or you're uh, homeless, you're in poverty, you don't have access to healthy food. So it's kind of just taking what you can get, um, which is sad. But we have great food shelters. There are food sharing things. Um, everyone can be helped. Everyone is affected as well. So let's continue to come down here. So um, these are just a few things that happen when malnutrition um, can come into play in developing countries. Food to population ratio. Um, this is something that we just can't help. Um, there's more people than there are food at this moment, um, but there's only so much that you can do. Here is uh, the war and political civil unrest. This is typically in other um, developing countries, but we do see it in the United States. Um, the Green Revolution, we tried to increase crop yields in the 60s. And um, this is where you get a lot of those GMOs, genetically modified plants, um, to keep up with the population. Um, but we eventually will see water shortages. Other countries have already seen that. Um, let's continue on. The impact of AIDS, you'll need to know the impact of AIDS worldwide. So 38 million worldwide are affected with AIDS. It's a virus transmitted via contact with bodily fluids. Um, 
a lot of times we think of AIDS as being a sexually transmitted disease, and that is not the case. It can be from any bodily fluid. Um, and it is not, it's it's everywhere. It's not just in certain places. So there's no vaccine currently available for any of these antiviral drugs. Um, providing AIDS drugs to pregnant women is a preventative measure, but it's not always um, available. So there is a cost and um, nutrition and AIDS can go hand in hand. So nutrition cannot prevent or cure HIV or AIDS. Nutritional status affects the disease's progression. So the more healthy balanced food we can have, the less this will show in symptoms, but it's not going to be preventative. Um, you do, you just need to have a full, a full healthy diet. And a lot of times where HIV and AIDS are more predominant, that's just not the case. So you just see um, bigger growth within those numbers in different countries. So let's see, how do we reduce the malnutrition in the developing world? So you have direct food aid, it's not a long-term solution. Um, you wanna try and drive the local prices down. Um, that doesn't always happen. So there are different ways that people try to um, better this with um, global goals, but um, extreme poverty is still on the rise. So um, there are local conditions. The Peace Corps um, tries to provide education distribute food and medical supplies. There are other sustainable solutions, helping people meet their own needs, um, directing them to resources and employment and opportunities to make more money to buy food, promoting land ownership um, if it's available. And then there have been some changes in agriculture and practices that um, we can see the negative results are the depletion of topsoil, so not planting um, in a smart and effective way. Uh, contamination of groundwater, decline of family farms because of maybe um, bankruptcy, you're needing to sell your farm, so you're losing that source of income as well as that source of um, just food. Um, there are different sustainable agricultural ways that you can um, help your area as well as yourself. Here are some goals of sustainable um, agriculture. Regenerative, you're restoring those degraded soils, that top soil, increasing the biodiversity of your soil. Um, improving your watersheds. Let's see. Um, no, no. Food recovery, no. Let's see nutrition. Um, we don't go through any of this for the, uh, sorry, the quiz. So let's move on to our next. Um, PowerPoint, is there another? No. Okay, should not remember. So nutrition during adulthood, I'm just briefly going over this. Uh, looking over healthy aging. So lots of people um, were seeing that aging healthier in the US, we should be living to be more than 100. Um, which is pretty cool. Here's a little growth of how the older population has um, moved forward. Healthy aging starts with your environment as well as your individuality. So um, it starts now, it starts with the habits that you form here um, with physical activity, with um, a balanced diet. Um, we're seeing a decline in um, certain diseases because of this. So uh, typically with aging, you're going to increase fattiness, you're going to decrease your lean body mass, but you want to continue to um, just move in general to increase your lifespan. Uh, this also helps with genetics, a lot of genetics. Um, there's just nothing you can do about it. Some men die sooner, some women die sooner. Females typically live longer than males. Um, it depends on your lifestyle. Um, over here in Okinawa, Japan, people live to 90 to 100 because of high consumption of vegetables, plant sources of protein and healthy fats, moderate consumption of fish, and then low consumption of meats, dairies, and sodiums. So um, sometimes it's just an environmental factor. Sometimes that can be um, something that is just, that's the only thing that, or that's the, the more predominant food that is around you. Um, I say in Oklahoma, Texas, Panhandle region, um, we typically have more um, red meats, chickens, porks, um, potatoes around us. So it's just how you consume those foods as to how um, they can affect you for the long term. 
um, nutrient needs. We won't really go over this a whole lot. We hit this a bit more in earlier sections. Um, it's all good information. Um, but the rest of this, um, you're going to want to know a little bit about sarcopenia, um, about obesity, about causes for weight loss in older adults, bone loss. Um, looking at different forms of arthritis, you will need to know that, um, as well as physical activity, what physical activity looks like for an older adult. Um, but that is going to be all you're going to need to look at for this last quiz. Um, I encourage you to continue through looking at benefits for nutrition as you age. Um, but that is all we're going to get cover for this last module. So if you have any questions, please let me know.